So there are those that tell me that crystal sticks are good for losing weight. How in the world can that be? Well, crystal sticks is an activity, and any activity that you do is going to burn up some calories. I think the real question here is, uh, can crystal sticks act in a fundamental way to help you lose weight? Well, lose weight uh, has to do with your metabolic rate, or rather how much calories you're burning on an average. And of course, the one way that crystal sticks would really benefit you would be to give you a method whereby you can raise your average metabolic rate by being able to raise your heart rate and then sustain that increased uh, raise of heart rate through the crystal stick activity. One of the things I discovered is that if you do the crystal stick straight in front of you, you're not getting a lot, it doesn't take a lot of effort to do that physically. But if you stretch yourself, and I'll turn sideways slightly to show you, if you stretch yourself over your hip and you stretch all of these long muscles through the body and start working them like that, this working motion is working the heart. So if I'm stretching the body, it doesn't take very long for me to increase my heart rate rather dramatically. And if I started to work it a while, such as doing my toss back basic moves, for example, even that, stretching far out from my body and doing it and then getting close, I've increased my heart rate rather dramatically. Now, if I keep these movements going for any period of time at all, my heart rate, not only will it go up, but after a while it'll sustain itself being up. In other words, I'll increase the rate of burn. We have had reports of people losing very, very large amounts of weight because of that sustained rate of burn. You might find yourself uh, getting involved in the activity, and when you start to twist, you'll notice your stomach gets sore. Well, I discovered the soreness in the stomach was because I'm using those stomach muscles in a way that I hadn't used before. And over a period of time, the stomach muscle that's squeezing and squeezing in these different ways uh, literally tightened up. And in fact, uh, if you turn around and look at straight line movements where you're not getting a lot of this twist and turn, that allows the stomach to distend, push out in other words. You get a dis distended stomach. But if you're twisting and strengthening and twisting, all of these side muscles and the muscles in the stomach itself are tightening up, tightening up, and tightening up, and the distension goes away. In other words, your saggy tummy starts to go away because you're now developing and demanding use of these wraparound muscles that wrap all the way around your hip like that. And when you twist and turn, you're using a lot of muscles that you don't normally call on in, in average modern life. You do, in fact, increase the metabolic rate when you do crystal sticks. The more dynamic you play with the sticks, the higher that will increase. Obviously, a regimen or program would be preferable to one where you just do it periodically as a diversion to your attention. If you want to get onto a program, my minimum suggestion is an hour a time uh, once every third day or so. Uh, much more than that, and you're not going to get a great deal of added benefit, but that hour should consist of at least half of it with your heart rate just rocking. And to do that, you've got to put on some music, you've got to dance around, stretch around, claim that area around your body, and really make it an active period of exercise. Uh, of course, it's fun, endorphins get released, you get happy, so what's wrong with that? You're going to get happy, you're going to lose some weight, you're going to have a great deal of fun. Also, if you uh, so fortunate that you don't have any stress, it won't matter to you, but most of us have a bit of stress that builds up here and there during the day. And uh, so the time that you spent working out with your sticks becomes a real joyful one. You look forward to it and your body just gives up all of that anger and all that fight or flight stuff that we build up with our stress. So uh, I would suggest if you have a high intensity job or something that requires lots of mental tension, then the sticks will be a particular benefit to you because it's doing something that puts you back in that centered position, left, right, left, right position, rather than all strung out like a dog chasing his tail in a stress pattern over on the left side. So uh, 10 minutes a day for you with the office door closed or whatever so you get a little privacy could make uh, for a much, much more, much, much more productive day and certainly a more creative and uh, rewarding day as well. So stress and sticks, hey, stress can be managed by sticks. Uh, 
you just got to take advantage of its potential. Don't be fooled by the simplicity of it. It's what you do with it that really makes it a real device for you. So some people call it a toy. Some people call it the best exercise equipment they've ever had. Other people say that it helped them with their disabilities. What do you say, Crystal Sticks? Well, if, uh, if you were to say that a person has a disability in the form of an inability to move or have a motor skill, yes, the Crystal Sticks could help them in that way. If you said that they have an emotional problem, well, that depends on what that emotional problem is, just like it may depend on what the physical disability is. But within that, the range uh, right there, a lot can be said about the benefits of the crystal sticks and helping in varying kinds of ways. Because the mastery of the skill has a feedback to it, in other words, it's simple enough that you can start it and yet complex enough that the more you do it, the more complicated it becomes and the more neurological growth takes place. Uh, because of that, uh, the skills to do something in front of you would have to be mimicked to your side and around your back and in different direction, requiring you to adjust yourself to that in different ways. And then, of course, there's great benefits that come from that. So, uh, if you're able to go left, right, left, right, left, right, then you're doing a fundamental activity that takes that dip between the two sides of the body and it starts to create this neurological web work or framework left, right, left, right, in different directions and different combinations. And that neurological framework, of course, once established, can be utilized uh, with many, many other kinds of activities. In other words, once it's there, you can do other things that takes advantage of that movement skill or that emotionally based movement skill, which is also important. There's another aspect to doing sticks that uh, is interesting and to observe someone who's been doing it, then you can understand it, but perhaps without seeing it, it wouldn't be as easy to identify. And that is that there is a confidence that starts to come from each small, successful action that you do with the sticks. And that confidence starts to compound itself. So a small, a small child, for example, uh, who learns motions gets a rewarding feeling from having learned those motions. And I think genetically it probably comes down to if you're successful, you survive. If you're not successful, you don't. So there was a kind of a reward that came from perceived successful actions. Now that reward uh, is some sort of endorphic release. It's like just a little bit saying you did good. Yeah, that's the right way to go. So. That happens, of course, with the stick activity. Each time you do a successful motion or combination of motions, there's a resulting emotional push and a resulting, oh, that was great, I enjoyed that. Uh, a little endorphic release then. And so what isn't so apparent is that endorphic release or that little successful motion reward compounds and compounds and compounds and compounds. So over a period of time, a stick player will start to have their emotional condition rest on this accumulated number of rewards of successful action that they've done with the sticks. In other words, they get a little exuberant. <laughs> they get happy. They also uh, become a bit more competent. They're, they're more prepared for learning, for more new experiences then, because when you're doing the stick activity, there's always room for a new experience, in which case you have to readjust yourself to react in a slightly different way to make another action come out of it, or to continue the action then. So, for young people, especially, that mode of confidence or that layering of confidence and competence that takes place over this period of time of doing sticks gives them a foundation that they walk through the world and they feel confident, they look confident, they act confident, and they're well-centered, uh, especially for an age. For example, if you take a six-year-old who's been doing sticks since they were four, you'll see a very competent very confident, uh, outgoing six-year-old. You'll find someone who has a good sense of who they are, where they are, and what they want, and what it's going to take to get it from their perspective. Uh, and this seems to reflect itself age through age as they get older. Uh, we get that kind of feedback regularly, uh, not only from stick players themselves, I also notice my own feedback reflecting that same thought, is that the competence grows. Uh, tackling new things. That's 
something I more readily would do nowadays than I might have done simply because of this development that has taken place. So uh, lots of benefits come out of the crystal sticks. Again, some are more uh, evident than others. Some have to be perceived from a couple of different perspectives as to see why that would be so.